What is a sound font? Hey! Hi, I'm Sound Font Guy, and as the name may have suggested, I'm here to tell you all about sound fonts. First, let's talk about MIDI. MIDI files are essentially just digital sheet music. They contain note data instead of audio, and can hold entire symphonies and files under one megabyte. They're lightweight, convenient, and versatile, but can't make any sound on their own. That, my dear viewer, is where sound fonts come in. Sound fonts are the digital instruments used by MIDI files. The sound font performs the song using the data found in the MIDI file. You got it! Part of why MIDI music is so popular is due to how small the files are. Between the sound font itself and the MIDI files, an entire video game soundtrack can be under 100 megabytes. And most retro games are considerably smaller than that. That's why this type of music was so commonly used in older games, and is still used to some degree in games today. The art of sampling has been a massive part of video game music for decades. Check out Toffee Bun's video on sampling in video games for some great perspective on that topic. Most people by now are familiar with the famous sample CDs that were used in games such as... When it comes to sound fonts, samples are usually much, much smaller than a full drum loop or an ambient pad sound. Oftentimes, it's a single note recorded from a synthesizer, a rompler, or even a live instrument compressed to a very small size with a programmed loop point. The sampling process usually results in a game's music having its own uniquely identifiable sound. Let's have a little pop quiz. Can you guess which three games these three sound fonts are from? Well, how'd you do? Leave a comment and let me know how many you got right. Fans seek out these sounds to make their very own music inspired by the games they love. Thus, some skilled individuals learn to extract those sound fonts so that anyone can use them. The legacy of sound fonts continues to thrive in modern music production, particularly in the realm of indie game development. A prime example of this is Toby Fox, legendary creator of the game Undertale. Fox famously used sound fonts to make that beloved soundtrack, demonstrating how these tools can still produce impactful and memorable music today. Even though not all of the sound fonts that Toby Fox used were from video games, many of them were. As a full-time composer myself, I can attest to their enduring value. I got my start many years ago when a few Super Nintendo sound fonts became freely available online. These resources allowed me to explore creatively and hone my craft, ultimately leading to my current career. Nowadays, I not only use sound fonts in my compositions, but I also create them. In an attempt to contribute to this ongoing cycle of creativity, my experience is just one of many, illustrating how sound fonts have democratized music production, enabling aspiring composers to grow their skills and pursue their passions. In many ways, sound fonts have become like a bridge between the nostalgic sounds of classic games and the innovative music of today's indie scene. Now, at this point, I know what some of you are thinking. Why do people often call the music in classic video games MIDI and the instrument sounds sound fonts when that's not technically correct? Because each different game system had its own format for music playback. 
Well, those formats were functionally pretty much the same as MIDI and SoundFont, that is, sequenced music with sample-based instruments. As such, terms like MIDI and SoundFont have kind of become the colloquial way to refer to sequenced music and sample-based digital instruments, respectively. It's kind of like saying you're filming something, even though there's no film on your phone. It's not technically correct, but it's universally understood. In the end, whether we're talking about true sound fonts or console-specific formats, the impact on video game music and fan creativity is undeniable. These technologies have not only shaped how games sound, but have also given fans the tools to keep these audio signatures alive. Okie dokie! As game audio continues to evolve, the legacy of sound fonts and MIDI lives on in the hearts of gamers and musicians alike, bridging the gap between the games we love and the music we create. So the next time you hear someone mention the Mario 64 sound font, you'll know that's not technically correct, but you'll also understand exactly what they mean. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if so, please hit the subscribe button. I've got more cool classic video game music stuff in the pipeline that I can't wait to share. Um, I have also just launched a Patreon page where you can request covers and arrangements of video game music in virtually any style you like, or you can even request for a sound font to be made just for you. Um, any amount of support is greatly appreciated, and I can't wait to show you all what's next for Sound Font Guy. <laughs>